Well, here we are, trekking, in the middle of the night, heading to Gondagora Law, or Gigi Law for short. A place we've never seen, even in the daylight. Lots of firsts on this trek. This is the most challenging day of the entire trek. This is 16 straight hours of trekking. Going up near vertical snow covered inclines, below freezing conditions, at 5,600 meters in elevation. And the descent was even more difficult. p.m. and we're going to bed because we got to be up in about four hours no five, no. five hours five hours no six hours six hours okay six <laughs> hours 11 11 yeah 11 11 30 anyway somewhere around there uh but we have to get up because uh, we're going to gondagora law and we have to trek up this pass you know it's completely snow we have to be wearing harnesses and uh crampons those spiky uh shoe like things that we've never done before luckily the other people luckily the you know obviously the guides have but uh, also the other trekkers that are with us uh, have done this as well we're we're the least ex we're definitely the least experienced trekkers in mm -hmm. this group no doubt about it because we've never done ice or snow trekking yet none yeah yeah and plus we haven't even done a trek in like 18 months so and these guys do treks like you know they I every six he, months or something no more than that these guys do treks like you know every month or every couple months they do long treks uh peter just got back from greenland mm -hmm. and then come over here and kate's uh you know i mean these guys are trekkers you know yeah. they're fully suited out they always have their backpack they're just they're ready to trek um so they're they're ready to go and that's good because more experienced people going with us the better yeah you know Peter's climbed mountains, done a lot of ice climbing, and I don't really know the terminology for it. But uh, anyway, we're just we're just an adventurous family. That's all we got going for us, uh, <laughs> and we're moderately in shape that we can do it. Um, but anyway, uh, but so that's what we're doing. You know, we're waking up here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a good day today. It was yeah. a nice sunny day today. Uh, it's a lot warmer here than it is on the glacier. Yeah. Bought better sleep last night, I'll tell you that. Um, and then we did the hot chocolate. We did the hot chocolate. Uh, that was cool. I mean, uh, everybody. And then we had uh, Australian Tim Tams brought into the mix. That was unexpected. <laughs> yeah. But very cool. So yeah, we had it's done. Mix of cultures there. Not the first time we've trekked at night because that was two nights ago. That was the first time we trekked at night. <laughs> but this is definitely the first time we trekked at night. And it's going to be brutally cold is what we're told it's going to be just like you know below zero high wind chill you know on that pass the wind is just going to be whipping us around so um but we're you know but what he went out there he showed us a video of him going up there they already cut in some steps for us he already mm -hmm. put in some line so i think it's going to be fine uh he <laughs> 
And he did it without crampons on. He did it without the rope and everything. And he made it back an hour early. Yeah, and he made it back an hour early. I mean, so he's very, he's highly, highly confident. In fact, they were like, they were like kind of singing and dancing when they came back because they were so confident and they felt so good about it. I mean, it was funny. Yeah. Uh, Abdullah had found some flowers and they had them in his ear and then he gave him <laughs> to you and then I gave them to you, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so they were, they were very we're, pumped. We're right there. Oh, here, you want to bring them? They're yeah. a bit wilty right now, but... Yeah, anyway, he found those flowers. Uh, I have about four layers on, five layers on, and I'm going to put a coat on. So it be five, six layers on. The boys have like 42 layers. And uh, you got four or five layers on? I've got four on top, three on bottom, uh, two pairs of socks, and then I'll have my jacket and I'll have a coat. Okay. All right. Well, I think, uh, oh, and we got some hot hands left over, those hot hand packets. We got enough to put a hot hand in all of our gloves. So those, those, oh man, those, I got to tell you, I brought them strictly because I wanted to heat up camera batteries, but I didn't need them. The camera batteries I just stick in my pocket. They warm up plenty fine. But those hot hands have been so nice on those freezing nights where you just can't get your feet warm, mm-hmm. you know, on the glacier. Oh, the glacier. Or you just can't get your ha- your hands warm. You just, you know, open one of those suckers up, shake it. It activates. It's I'd say it's warm for a good five, six hours. It says 10 hours, but... I, yeah, up to 10 hours. Yeah. Because, like, the other night, it only lasted me two. Yeah, so, I, I, yeah. I, mine are lasting definitely longer than that. Like, And they get really hot. So, But anyway, those have been lifesavers. So I definitely recommend. They're kind of heavy. You know, they're, they're like iron powder. But, you know, they're definitely worth it. So I would uh, bring them if you do this trek. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but, uh, and then I definitely. And they are not a sponsor. Yeah, they're not a sponsor. We don't. Yeah. Okay, well, anything else you want to say? Um, I'm a bit nervous. A bit nervous, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for whatever reason, I have a nervous stomach, and I don't know why. Well, it's understandable. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to get on film. It's going to be in the dark. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to put my, I'm going to turn my camera on, but I don't know how well it's going to do. But, uh, it ought to be interesting, I'll tell you that. <coughs> hey. Ah. What's up? How are you doing? Yeah. Okay. That's my carabiner. All right, it's midnight, Aiden. And we're getting ready to go track for about 12 hours. Are you ready? No. Do you have plenty of rest, though? Yeah. Really? Good. Yeah. I thought you were going to tell me definitely not. I can't believe we're doing this. Yeah. It's going to be exciting. All right, everybody's harnessed up. Everybody has their gaiters on. And uh, we're ready to rock. Oh, I guess actually mom's still harnessing up B-Man. B-Man, you all harnessed up? Yeah. Okay, good. So, uh, yeah, I don't have anything in my backpack to carry those crampons. You just carry it. Okay. okay. This one you just put it off, you know? Uh, he will. He just, he's got his coat right there that he needs to pick up. Aiden. That's not my that's coat. That's mine. Oh, that's your coat? Oh, yeah. where's your coat? Over there. Okay. Oh, look. Okay. Ah. All right, you're golden, B-Man. Let's go get your um, uh, trekking poles, okay? Okay. They're in the uh, mess tent. (laughs) All right, here we go. Are you ready, Mrs. Jones? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Three hours uh, before we get the snow and then we're in the snow for about an hour or two yep 
best case scenario. Maybe three, goes yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we get some light by then. Yeah. Not gonna get much on camera in the dark. <laughs> okay, I got a solid two, two and a half hours of sleep. Uh, so I'm pumped. I've got about four or five half hours. Oh yeah, you're like, yeah. you're in the land of luxury. Yeah, we got water. Yep, we all got water. All right, let's get rolling. All right, well, we're on our way. Already trekked a little bit here. Beautiful sky tonight. I don't think this camera can do any justice to this view. Well, here we are, trekking, in the middle of the night, heading to Gondagora La, or Gigi La for short, a place we've never seen, even in the daylight. Lots of firsts on this trek. This is the most challenging day of the entire trek. This is 16 straight hours of trekking, going up near vertical snow-covered inclines, below freezing conditions, at 5,600 meters in elevation, and the descent was even more difficult. What you're going to see in this video is much different than what is normally done. It's possible that even if you have heard of Gigi Law, you definitely haven't heard of it being done like this. Normally, treks over Gigi La are assisted by a rescue crew that come from the village of Huche. Huche is the town we end our trek at and take a jeep back to Skardu. Every year, a group of men from Huche are appointed to live at alley camp for two months. While living there, they maintain about 1,500 meters of rope to pass Gondagora La. They charge the trekking companies about $15 per person to assist. They are the custodians of Gigi La. After the two months are up, they pack up camp and their rope and head back to Huche. Virtually no trekking companies attempt Gigi La without the help of the rescue crew. Just imagine, along with everything else you bring on the trek, you also have to bring 1,500 meters of rope. And remember, everything that makes it over Gigi La has to be carried by human hands. That means a lot of thought has to go into what is packed from the very beginning of the trek. That means the only solution for those attempting Gigi Law outside of that two month window when the rescue crew operates is to bring a couple hundred meters of rope, string it up, have everyone pass that section, and then take the rope and string it up for the next section. And yes, we were outside of that two month window. There is no rescue crew. As you can imagine, restringing the rope a half dozen times can add on a lot of time in crossing Gigi La. This means we will be on the snowy inclines of this pass deep in the Karakoram Mountains for eight grueling hours. For this reason, very few companies are equipped with the knowledge, ability, and willingness to do this. Another important factor is that the porters here are not ordinary porters. Most trekking companies never know who the porters will be on any given trek until they reach Ascole, and that's when they hire any available porters. However, you can't just show up and expect to hire porters that will be willing to cross GG Law, and on top of that, expect them to cross GG Law when the rescue crew has already packed up and left. You need high altitude porters willing to make this extreme journey. So all the porters on our trek had to be hired and brought from a store and traveled with us from Skardu and knew from the beginning what they were getting into. And that should shine a bit further light on just the kind of endeavor we were engaged upon. And one more factor on top of all of this for consideration is that regardless of anything else, all would be for naught if the weather was not favorable. Even with the assistance of a rescue crew, 
with bad weather, the pass is just not possible. And there is always a high chance that weather will play a role. We knew from the beginning that it was a good possibility we would get to Gigi Law after the Houshe crew had left. We knew this many months in advance. However, we were left with the fact that we may never be here again and there was no way to schedule the date earlier. So we had to make a decision. Either do it now under these more difficult conditions or most likely never do it again for the rest of our lives. As you saw in the videos, it was still an uncertainty that we would go until the day Wahid and Abdullah went to scope out the current state of the pass. And even then, if a storm came in last minute, we would have to cancel. For us, this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. So we took it. If we hadn't ever adventured into uncharted territory for a family, we were sure doing it now. Fortunately, we have Wahid and his team, and to further stack the deck in our favor, we had Peter, an accomplished mountaineer in his own right, who proved to be not only extremely competent, but exceedingly cheerful while the rest of us were having a really rough time. But honestly, every single person proved to be perfect trekking companions, as Kate was there with some very warm mittens for B-Man when his gloves just wouldn't keep his hands warm anymore, and Tyler, who was there to watch over A-Man, who always wanted to be in front of the pack. And the boys, who toughed it out and never complained and kept a fantastic attitude during the very long and difficult climb. This was an extremely intense experience, and I could not be more thankful to those who shared it with us. It is not the mountain we conquer, but ourselves. Edmund Hillary. Well, the moon's up there and the ridge is up there, but you have to do your imagination. But we're basically almost to the lines. How long has it been? Anybody know? About two hours, I think. Okay. All right, we're getting ready to get on the ropes. Everybody's tying on their crampons. Just went up a, like a 45 degree incline, all snow. That was something else. And, and then, uh, but uh, getting ready to get our crampons on and there's the safety lines right there. And it's been about three hours or so. So, and uh, so that means it's probably around two, 2.30. It's three enough. Three o'clock, okay. 3 a.m. Boss, boss, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. Boss, you're here. I'm going to go to the house. 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 We're just in a cramp on here. We were all the way down there hours ago. Now we still have. Where, so where do we have to go to? Uh, just over here, right? Yeah. And then down. Okay. This is definitely intense. I6. I'll speak more about it later. Oh. Up to there. Up over there. What time is it, B-Man? Five, five, six, eight. Look, look, look. Mama, bar ke jaad kiri hai, zar bejo. The life made it to another guy. Enjoy, enjoy life. I don't understand how they do it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Cold, that was it. Yes. No, not cold. Really? Cold, people. Huh? Oh, 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 What do you want to buy? I don't know. You're going to be on the side of the car. You're going to be on the side of the car. You're going to be on the side of the car. You're going to be on the side of the Right up to where Abdullah is. Okay. Then we're gonna go up and we're gonna go back down. It's gonna be warm, it's gonna be nice. We're gonna go up over the other side? Yep. Well, you can look at that side, the right side. So we're gonna go to the left? Yep. And then we're gonna take a left? Yep. Make little shelves with your foot if you need to. What's up? Just capturing a little video. Huh. <laughs> Me too. Oh yeah? How are you feeling? I'd like to be done. <laughs> I feel okay, just anxiety. Yeah. Walking into that crevice is pretty traumatic. Whoa! That's awesome. Yeah. Right there, that ice cave. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Just cross this part here. This is a lot of services, you know.
Incline number 43. The man's doing great though. That's the main thing. Thought my toes would freeze off by now, but I think they're fine. My hands are fine. I guess, you know, didn't have much energy in it. That blood starts pumping, starts warming up. I'm sure I'm glad I put the 93 layers on. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd be really bad off. See, another hill. It just keeps going. It is nothing like I've seen on any videos. It's way, way, way more extreme. I think so, though. No. You have to warm up the top to get it open. So frozen? Yeah. Oh my goodness. You have to on it. You grab the whole thing with your teeth. Oh. There you go. Still one more. Oh, yeah. It's K2 right there. I don't know. I don't know. I I think this is the top. Not positive. 43. This is 44. <coughs> and it is obviously extremely hard to get up. Oh, geez. This is a mess. Uh -huh. Remember this morning when I said, is that the top or is it the whole top behind that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I told you that. There was 14 there behind that. And they were worse. All right, we're gonna get on this side and uh, grab the rope. Here it is. Look. I'm fixing it, huh? Okay. All right, B-Man, you made it to the top of Gondagora Law.
Yeah. I mean, dude, that was the most intensive thing I've ever done. And usually they have the ropes strung all the way up. Uh -huh. But a few days ago, they took them down. Uh -huh. So our crew had to put the ropes up, then take them down in, in different sections, like five, six sections. So it took so much longer. Well, honey, we made it to the top. Yeah, I just gotta get down. Yeah. Well, wanted to talk to Aiden too, but super gorgeous up here. Dude, look at those. Those might be 8,000 meter peaks. Yeah. I mean, it's like, that's P4 right there. Yeah. This is basically climbing the mountain. I mean, look at that. And look at that. Yeah, this is not a pass. This is a mountain. <laughs> Well, I guess you'd go up another 20 meters and then officially you've climbed a mountain. Yeah. You're cool. You're cool? Yeah. All right. Well, it is fun. We need to get some sunblock on this guy's face. Oh. Okay, kind of man. Yeah. I need me into mountains. <laughs> Basically, climate. <laughs> Oh, can uh, you get a picture of us? Yeah. Thanks. Have a look. Do you want to do a jump photo? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, these are like the best views ever. <laughs> now, was that a whole bunch of 8,000 meter peaks I saw? Go yeah, at the, there you could see K2, Broad Peak, Gash of Rums, bam. Jump. That was like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And then I came down here. These aren't 8,000s, but this is unbelievable. Oh, cool. Oh, there was heaven, man. Wow. That's like the best view in the world. Wait, do we get to take them off now? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> You're happy to take your crampons off? Yeah. <laughs> nice. I can't feel my feet. <laughs> that was so intense. Wow. Just wow. Well done, Mrs. Jones. Thanks. <laughs> Holy moly. This is one of the most beautiful views in the whole world. This right here. You just conquered Gigi Law. What are you going to do next? Disney World, man. All right, well, we're waiting to descend after crossing uh, Gigi La, but we can only send like a couple people down at a time because it's extremely steep and rocky, and we actually still have to keep our harnesses on. And, uh, wow, yeah. This takes a really long time for three people just to make it down, you know, a few hundred meters of rope just because of how, you know, loose the rocks are and they don't want you going down right after another person so you could you know throw a whole bunch of rocks on them and then look at this guy right here he is so tired that he fell asleep on rocks 
I mean, how tired do you have to be to fall asleep on rocks? I'm tempted to. My goodness. Yeah, I just, GG Law is not for kids, I don't think, unless you disagree with me. <coughs> I don't think it's for kids. You don't think so? Yeah. You, don't, you wouldn't recommend other 12-year-olds doing it? No. What about 13 or 14? Defending what they are. Really? Who they are. What was it? You were like, when you were doing it, we were like, oh my goodness, it's so hard. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. All right. Yeah, look at this. They're taking forever to descend. <laughs> oh, wow. They're having to scoot on their butt? Wow, that's no joke. That is a steep descent. All right. Well, that's what we got to look forward to. I don't know what's scarier, what we did before, or rappelling down this thing. Man, we were just, man, we were just up at the top for about almost two hours just waiting for the others to get down. But now I understand. Wow, this is something else after I've already been trekking for 10 hours and then this. Wow, interesting. <coughs> but me and the B-Man, we're going to do it, right B-Man? Yeah. We're going to do it because we have to. And we're going to have a really good sleep tonight. Yeah. Oh, buddy. This is one intense day. Aiden's already down there. We thought that the worst was over, but the descent was even more difficult, as we had to wait again for the ropes to be strung in sections, and we had to go down extremely slowly, as every rock under our feet were giving way. Eight hours to get to the top of Gigi Law, and we still had another eight hours before getting to our camp. Wahid had to go up and down the incline numerous times to keep helping everyone down. Everyone slipped multiple times because no footing was secure. No one was hurt, but you had to go so slowly. How the porters made it down so well has to be the most impressive feat yet. As a mother, this was the most stressful part of the trek. Needless to say, Ronnie was too exhausted to film. <laughs>